Good morning. Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome to our Natural Health News Live show. I am hoping our technology gods all work uh, in unison today. So welcome to all of you joining us. Today, I'm really excited to share with you a, a two really core tips to improve your immunity by healing your nasal passages and your oral, your dental health. And this is really critical because when it comes to our exposure to any viral or bacterial invasions, the ways that we see integration into the body is through the nose and the mouth. And so this is gonna be really critical for us to bolster and support our immunity by balancing and healing our nasal and oral uh, passageways. So today's video, the core of our video is going to be to addressing ways that you can address this at home very easily and actually in a very expensive uh, way. So I'm gonna share with you some uh, kind of methodologies, approaches and kind of steps to healing your oral and dental um, health and then also your, your sinuses and sinus, nasal, ear, nose and throat passageways. They all are interconnected. So when we and address one, we're ultimately addressing the other. So for all of you, Joining and your new welcome. Um, I'm streaming live on Instagram TV. I actually am having issues with my cell phone, so I'm using my little mini iPad. And I uh, host a natural health news live show every day on Instagram TV and YouTube. And on YouTube, there's a playlist as well as on Instagram TV where you can watch this on the replay. And when you join live, this is very much a live format, it's unedited. I just have some notes, so it's not scripted um, in my delivery of communication. And I just want to share with you that my intentions is to help, my, my singular intention is to help you and your family get through these crazy, perilous, stress-filled times of COVID-19 um, in a healthy, as stress-free manner as you can with a focus on the ways that you can use natural healing and natural medicine to cater to your health needs. That's my focus and intention. So if you're excited about this content, please give me a thumbs up. Um, it totally helps our algorithm and I hope you will share, hit the share button and share on Facebook. Um, so if you are watching on the replay, there are show notes down below on YouTube, up above on Instagram TV, where you can click on the timestamp where we get into the oral and um, nasal health. So if you wanna bypass the natural health news, and the, the news about COVID right now that I'm going to go into, feel free to hit that uh, timestamp. So today um, I have just a little bit of information. I have a really interesting study that's come out. This is going to get a lot of coverage. So you guys might hear it here first, um, but just globally, the world is really in that exponential phase. So we hit 22 million cases this week. We're at 22.4. We'll be at over 22 and a quarter in a day. Um, and it's just increasing. We have uh, globally 783,000 citizens across the world who've died of COVID. We're um, more than three quarters of our way to the million uh, mark, which is insane. And here in the US, we're at 5.4 uh, 5 .4 million cases. We posted a big day yesterday. There are over 1,300 fatalities. Any day that's over a thousand is considered a really bad day. Um, any day where any individual loses their life is a bad day for the family and community members. We are now just under 175,000 US lives lost to COVID. And one of the things that um, has come out, John Hopkins, their Center for Computer Systems and Engineering has uh, done a whole kind of assessment of the data that exists right now in multiple databases, hospital, state, nursing homes, tribal communities, just globally, um, not just the US, but also in other countries. And what they've seen globally is that there is a uh, major underreporting of cases. And the number one reason behind that is the lack of testing, Im improper testing, so inaccurate tests a lack of testing supplies and testing kits and not testing soon enough and having robust testing systems. And this is across the board. The US is obviously leading, leading the charge in this, but there are, there are countries all over the world that 
Um, some of them, they're suspected, and we're, unfortunately, friends, we're lumped in this category. Some are suspected that the national government's hiding or downplaying the outbreak with regard to the testing that is accessible, the testing that's being reported. We've seen that circumventing the CDC and reporting to the HHS has actually put some states in a position where they don't even know what their numbers are. So I just wanna put that out there. That is an assessment of data from John Hopkins University um, and their engineering and computer systems group. And basically what that indicates is that uh, we have a massive global community spread. We have no real control over this virus at this point. Um, I do wanna notate internationally, China is starting to allow fans going into stadiums. Their numbers are way lower than ours and they've really had some outbreaks that they've been very isolated and very quick to react to. Based on yesterday's kind of um, study that assessed, I think it was the, was it the Lancet? It was, yeah, the Lancet had posted about uh, testing and tracing in terms of the reduction of spread by 26%. Some of the little pockets that China experienced since the major Wuhan outbreak, they were able to get this lockdown. So they are starting to open up, reopen. There's a lot of angst and jealousy here in terms of being able to go back to normal. We're not there yet. Now, here domestically, um, I just want to highlight a few things. Um, California had, uh, they're starting to inch up on the test. So they had over 6,000 positive cases. Um, and they had 160, 181 fatalities yesterday. Florida um, did not have a really good day in fatalities. Florida's almost at 600,000. So the difference between California is 638,831 total positives that have been recorded. Florida has 584,047 uh, positives that have been recorded. Yesterday, they had 179 fatalities. That's a big day. Texas had another day. They had uh, 7,000 7, positive, 7,024 positive cases. Uh, come through and they had 309 deaths. That's a big day yesterday for uh, Texas. And also Georgia, um, there's been a leaked report um, that the uh, White House and the um, COVID task force, they have put out that Georgia's in the red zone. So that is where the state we live in now. Um, I'm a Floridian, I grew up in Florida, but we're here transplanted north of Atlanta. And um, the report is that they're recommending Georgia, um, if there are more than 50 active cases in a county, they're recommending that those counties go mask requirement. Basically, that's every county. <laughs> I mean, it's, I can't, it's, I, it's just so insane. Like, I, I laugh about it. It's not funny. This is not a funny matter. But their recommendation is that if you have, if you are in a city or county with 50 or more active cases, then you should be having mask ordinances. And when we look at the school closings, we have three high schools right now closed in our county um, because of the outbreak that has begun in the school setting and in a county where there's no mask requirements and kids are going to school not wearing masks. I did, I made a run out yesterday, a uh, drive through run um, to Walgreens to get something for our video today. And one of the things that I noticed, it was the bus driver, you know, the buses were dropping off. The, all the bus drivers are wearing sunglasses and masks, but there I noticed some kids on, on buses that were not wearing masks, which is concerning. Um, so this may be something that uh, may have an impact in Georgia, more likely than not, um, unfortunately. And um, there was some communication that we should expand our testing um, so that remains to be seen, but just globally or just nationally. So focus here in, in the U.S. nation, um, Georgia, Texas and Florida um, are leading in the cases per capita. We have more, more cases per capita in Georgia, Florida and Texas than New York, Arizona and um, New York, Arizona and California. So that is very concerning. If you live in one of these states, Georgia, Texas, or Florida, we have a uh, community spread. We have an outbreak and we are an epicenter. And Georgia's been, there's been a lot of chatter that we are uh, the next epicenter. So I do wanna highlight just uh, some news about colleges. Um, there's been more discoveries of COVID on the UNC campus, University of North Carolina. 
um, there are now cloisters is expanded out into from there was a Sigma new house that had that fraternity was locked down with COVID. Now they've identified two sorority houses. Uh, one house has seven uh, positive cases. Another has six. Um, so that's more news there. And that's a week into uh, people being on campus. Um, there is currently a battle apparently happening between the department of, um, it's, it's HHS human and health services and the FDA. And, um, what, why that's really critical is that the FDA generally is the approval body for pharmaceutical meds. They make statements about our food safety, you know, however you want to see the FDA, there's a lot of kind of fine lines in terms of, you know, whether they're regulating for our safety or not. When we look at European markets and the amount of chemicals that are allowed in ingredients. So the FDA tends to be a little, a little bit, you know, and I'm, this is, this is very mild, but they're, they're, they tend to be lax in terms of just how, how tight they are with the requirements. Well, the um, HHS, the Department of HHS actually has determined that when it comes to the tests, the COVID testing, the private COVID tests that are coming out from manufacturers, the HHS has determined the FDA does not have the authority to regulate lab developed tests. And if you recall, if you joined me yesterday, I reported that there was a test called Thermo Fisher. Um, they have a, um, a pathology test. It was the first one first uh, lab developed test that was granted emergency authorization from the FDA and they're pumping out false positives. And I highlighted about this research that this is very concerning, especially when this is used in like nursing homes and they cluster people who are positive cases. And if you've had a false positive, you now are going to be in a room with COVID patients. And you, if you didn't have it before, you will for sure get it. Um, this, this is not great in the world of, of regulation. And there is a role, you know, we do have to have some sense of regulation for our safety's sake. Um, and so there's this ongoing battle and I don't know how that's gonna shake out, but what the problem here is that there are relaxing of testing rules. And, um, you know, it, it's problematic when we're we have such community spread, we have such a lack of testing facilities, locations, you know, Florida is still not back online post the hurricane. And I think it was utilized as a way to just shut down some of those major testing facilities in the epicenters. Um, the problem here is that the FDA has to have some role in regulating this. And it's this battle. And we are losing as citizens um, and our family members. Not everybody knows, who, you know, what test you're just getting a test. You're not always uh, aware of or made uh, aware of who, what tests you're taking. So as far as the accuracy levels and the points of accuracy, it's very problematic. Um, now, this is one really, really interesting study. Very, it's a small study, but basically it's out of New York, it's out of Mount Sinai, and um, it's called the bubble study. <laughs> it's really, really fascinating, but essentially um, what's happened with COVID, um, all of these physicians were noticing, uh, and this again is New York based because New York had such a huge amount, you know, early phase, a lot of people are in respirators and ventilators. What they started identifying was that when they would take people off ventilation, people were demonstrating brain damage. The neuro COVID had taken effect and they're, they're trying to identify what right now, why that's happening. And this one clinician, um, wanted to do what they call transcranial Dopplers. And it's a way, a Doppler is an assessment, kind of an ultrasound of our vascular channel. So transcranial means through the brain. So it gets through, it's a, a special a special type of scan. Um, it is non-invasive, it doesn't hurt the body, but it's a way to get through the bony mass of our cranium, our skull, and gets in to see the vascular channels of our brain. And they wanted to do these transdoppler uh, scans on patients. But to do so, you'd have to be in and around the patient's face. And they, it, it, it was, it's risky. It's risky with COVID. It's risky with exposure. So this doctor um, used a new technology. It's a robot um, track that actually is able to do uh, that, that transcranial Doppler 
and a, from afar. So they're using robotic technology to be able, and it sits in and around the head. So you don't have to have a clinician holding a wand, you know, or how, however they're doing that around the brain, being close to somebody's breath. So what they've done is they ran a study and basically this, this robot track. So it goes around the head and it tracks and is able to identify brain function and the stroke risk of these patients, because what they were finding is that the microclots in the lungs also mirrored some of the stroke situations. So people were getting microclots in their brain. And that's why they weren't coming out of uh, the medicated comas, they weren't going back to their pre um, ventilation selves, they were relaxed, you know, there was they were noticing a lack of, of motor function and a whole bunch of other brain related damage. So what this doctor did is with this robot, they do this study. So a bubble study basically is they inject uh, a saline solution that has small little air bubbles. And it's not something that would hurt you. But what traditionally, like if you're if you have a healthy lung function, what would happen is those bubbles would go and get cycled out via the lungs, via the capillaries of the lungs, and you would the bubble, the bubbles would literally exit and the gas would then move from the lungs and out. So you'd be just exhaling those bubbles. Well, in COVID patients, that doesn't happen. And they were trying to find out why. And so the thought and the theory behind this, they scanned 18 people. They did 18 of the bubbles, the bubble uh, robot technology. Um, 15 of 18 identify that these bubbles actually seep through and bypass uh, the lungs. Um, and they actually either exit through the heart. And the only way to do that is if you had a hole in your heart or some sort of abnormality. Um, and so there may be some people do have holes in the hearts, they have, you know, valve dysfunction. So that might be one. But potentially COVID might cause that and we're seeing a lot of, you know, cardiovascular heart related impairments. But what what they found is that there's an abnormal dilated lung capillary function and that that does not allow the body to get rid of these bubbles and ends up the bubbles see through and move into the brain. And, and so what that means is the bubble study is just showcasing how the oxygen is not exiting uh, the pathways it needs to. And instead it's in, it's moving through the blood, breaking through the blood brain barrier and getting into the, the brain. And that's where we're seeing some of the damage. That is a very, very big breakthrough friends. It's very fascinating. Um, I, I think this is going to have significant positive ramifications in terms of potentially identifying stroke victims way sooner. You know, there's no way when somebody's in a medical induced coma to know if they've had a stroke. Traditional kind of the the way of assessing is through symptoms. And when somebody is not demonstrating any type of symptoms, there's no way of knowing when the extent, the degree. So this is really, really fascinating. Um, so that is, that's a really big piece of news. I was excited to see that. Um, and the other thing that I want to highlight is another study that's come out about children. It's at a Mass General and Mass uh, General uh, Children's Hospital up in Boston. Um, what they've identified is that uh, children who are testing positive with COVID, it, it, re, uh, it, it affirms other studies that showcase children that do test positive, they have higher levels of COVID viral particulates and that children are the most contagious uh, because of that. So we knew in studies from two weeks ago, um, or studies I've, I've highlighted two weeks ago, but they were, they were, they've been articulated June, July. Um, what they found is that in the sinus cavities, and this is why we're kind of going into oral sinus uh, health today, um, what they found is that the sinus cavities of children, when they did a swab, there was a lot of viral particulate. And so even though like we now know that children 10 and older are breathing like adults and have the same kind of contagiousness as an adult in terms of the extent that the air goes out. But now we've identified children, younger children particularly, have massive 
uh, just an overwhelming abundance of these viral particulates. They may be pre-symptomatic pre or asymptomatic, but they could infect the adults around them, the older children around them, grandparents, teachers, bus drivers. So this is very, very problematic. Um, but and that, so those are two studies. So the bubble study and this mass gen children's hospital study about children's viral load and the uh, contagiousness of um, their, uh, the viral particulates is really critical. So with that being said today, let me write down my little timestamp. Um, today, I wanna talk to you about how to enhance, improve, support and heal your uh, nasal passageway, so your sinuses, and this can include up here, we have a sinus cavity up here. Um, I am definitely feeling that here, we've got a lot of particulates uh, roaming through our house as we are in phase one of our remodel upstairs. And you know, you have sinuses, pa sinus patches, passageways up here, you have sinuses here, and then you have your eustachian tube. So the ears get involved. I'm only right now talking about sinuses and your oral cavity. But today I want to talk about how to improve your nasal passageways, how to heal them, how to reduce the inflammation, and also to balance the microbiota. We have a and microbiota means healthy bacteria. We have a oral and a nasal microbiota that needs to remain intact. So I have a lot of folks that say I have a nasal polyp, I have sinusitis, I have uh, clogged plugged ears. And I don't know how to get resolve that I don't want to take, you know, the allergy medications, I don't want to do the allergy sprays or the, um, you know, the sprays where they open up your passageways, because it's very damaging. I have a lot of folks that are in that category. So today, we're going to address how to heal that. And then on the second part of this, we're also going to talk about the oral health and your oral health is really critical. It's your front line of your immune system. It is the primary defense. Our mouth and our nose are the two core ways that people are being exposed and bringing in COVID. Our eyes as well, but particularly, you know, you're touching your, your fingers, you touch your mouth, you touch your nose. And that is how a lot of germs uh, naturally, viruses and bacteria enter the body. So I wanna share with you several different ways and resources that you can implement at home. And the first thing I want to talk to you about is your oral microbiota. And there are a lot of things you can do to improve this. Some of the things that will be present when you have an unhealthy oral microbiota, dental caries or cavities will be indi indicators. Now, this is also uh, particularly appropriate for children, too. So there's some aspects here that translate into kids, pediatric care. So um, you'll have that, you'll have inflamed gums, bleeding gums, you can also have um, bacteria or like a white tongue, um, you might wake up with dry mouth, you might have Sjogren's disease, which is a mucosal related inflammatory disease where the body attacks the mucosal lining, that then in turn causes an imbalance in the oral microbiota. So I want to address that first, because when we improve the oral microbiota, it's phase one to heal the sinuses. So without healing the oral cavity and uh, nourishing it with all the right nutrients and activities to heal and lower bacteria levels and lower inflammation, we're then going to lay the pathway to heal your sinuses, open up your ear canal, you know, the ear canal, the eustachian tubes and heal your ear problems. And so my most popular videos are ear draining, ear popping, clogged ears, but how we get there is actually focusing on your mouth and your nose. So let's dig into the mouth. Number one, I love to recommend a rinse. And so when you're brushing your teeth, and we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about toothpaste. But when you're brushing your teeth, you want to make sure that after you finish brushing your teeth, that you are using a Himalayan salt rinse. And this is just like a swish around. The Himalayan salt is, and if you can tell. Um, oh, I thought I had, oh, here it is. I always get this type of salt at TJ Maxx. This was $2.99. But you want to get the fine grain pink Himalayan salt. The pink Himalayan salt is rich in a lot of minerals. So you're enhancing some of the mineral absorption. And as you recall, I talk a lot about zinc. Zinc is going to be in the minerals in Himalayan salt. The color that Himalayan salt is, this pinky color, those are dense, rich minerals. 
So you want to, um, you know, add a tablespoon or two, I go pretty liberal, and I, you know, get really hot water, and then I swirl it around. And I might do two or three swishes. So I grab a big, you know, uh, I have a, a, a coffee mug that I'll use. And I take a big swig and mm, I'm swirl it around 20, 30 seconds spit and do it again. You can then conclude with a gargle with your pink Himalayan salt. That's great for folks that have post nasal drainage. Like right now, that's what I'm experiencing just from all the work that happened Monday and Tuesday up there. <laughs> and because of that, I'm getting the post nasal drainage that's affecting. I have a little cough and that is uh, partly because we have particulates in our air like allergens right now, August and September can be really bad as we're transitioning and, you know, certain flowers are blooming with the this late summer sun that can affect our, our sinus cavities. And it also can affect our throat and the throat has that, that oral connection. So one of the things that you can do is do the rinse and you can do a gargle. The other thing that I love on the last bit of my salt gargle, I'll add some drops of colloidal silver. And this is a 250 parts per million. This is a pretty powerful colloidal silver. And colloidal silver is a natural antibiotic. It is nature's antibiotic. Silver has always been used to ward off uh, bacteria. So when we hear that phrase, oh, they were born with a silver spoon, uh, you know, in their mouth or whatnot. And Children who maybe uh, are families and, you know, aristocracy and kings and queens, they had silver platters and silver. Um, the value of that was based on the ability for the folks that had more money to protect their body against illness and disease. So silver actually has antibacterial, antimicrobial properties. So colloidal silver delivers that in a unique way. It's healthy. It's not, and you know, won't cause any imbalances. But what it will do is it'll help heal any type of festering bacteria, and that is great for any gingivitis, any type of you know gum uh, disease or gum tissue that's irritated, maybe from flossing or you know uh, dental work that you've had. If you have metal in your mouth, you're automatically going to have a higher degree of bacteria. The metal is, and, and uh, candida, there's a heavy bonded attraction and you'll have more biofilm production in your body, in your mouth, your oral cavity. And that is what we want to address. So that is number one. You want to do the rinse and the gargle. The other thing that I will conclude with, this I particularly do at night. I love Aramir. And this is an Ayurvedic mouthwash. It has a ton of stuff. And I'm just going to read off some of the ingredients. It has uh, xylitol, castor oil, birch bark. It has a whole bunch of oils like uh, menthol and eucalyptus. It has clove as well. Clove is awesome for oral health. Um, it has Indian licorice. It has uh, pilu. It has neem. It has jujube. It has rose apple. It has more clove. Walnut, walnut, the black inside of a walnut is antibacterial. Um, it has Indian almond, it has betta nut, it has Asian holy oak or holy oak, prickly ash, it has cinnamon, it has sarsaparilla. This is awesome. And I tell you what, like, I love this stuff. It smells fabulous. Like, it's got a whole blend of stuff, it's got a little cinnamon, licorice y kind of smell to it. And oh, just a little swig of this and um, you just rinse that around and then you spit it out and it's vegan. It's sulfate free. It's fluoride free. It's paraben free. It's really clean, but this has 23 different Ayurvedic herbals and I have links. You can grab this on Amazon. I don't have, I think I, Oh yeah, here. Oh look, I got it from TJ Maxx. <laughs> so I love to go to TJ Maxx for some of these items. I always know they'll have my Aramir. And I also want to talk to you about your toothpaste. So a lot of toothpastes on the market will have sulfate, they will have fluoride, they'll have parabens, they'll even have gluten, and they will have, um, and sulfate. So let me tell you about sulfate. So what people really kind of mentally love, is they love when they get their face and their body lathered, it makes you feel like you've got soap going on, you're getting clean, partly it's psychology. And the other thing is it's an ingredient that's extremely harmful to your body. And so when you choose a toothpaste, you want to choose a toothpaste that's sulfate free um, and sodium lauryl sulfate. That's the core ingredient. 
that's unhealthy. That will screw up your oral microbiota. So if you choose, and, and I have to also say, you have to read your labels. Tom's of Maine has sulfate. So there are labels and brands that are natural that you think, oh, this is totally okay. Mm -mm, it's not there. Um, Aramir, they have a toothpaste. I love their toothpaste. So um, the neem in it is so healing to gums. It's so fantastic. And I recommend this. I used to, and, and I had a retail, a big, large retail facility in Florida. When I would recommend that to, to customers that would come in, they come back three, six months after and say their dentist literally was like, what are you doing? And they said, oh, I just made a change in my toothpaste and noticed big changes in terms of, you know, when they do like the little, I can't remember the name of it. It's the scaling and they do the, you know, two, one, one, two, and it can go all the way down to, I think, eight or nine. And that is indication of pockets and, and a, a, a inflammatory state of the gum. You know, this is your tooth and your gum. It, there's kind of an opening and that opening is where we see bacteria. And then we see the, the tooth decay. We see tooth teeth loosening, things like that. Very, very critical. Um, Pau says, just found another bottle of that mouthwash at TJ Maxx. Yeah, good stuff. I actually, I have to make a TJ Maxx run this week, probably Sunday morning, because I am down to my last notebook. These are, this is all that I've got. I have these really, I get these great notebooks. Isn't that great? They're like leather bouncy. TJ Maxx, $6.99. This is one of my favorite style notebooks. Um, so I'm going to be making a trip. I'll probably post in a Sunday or two my TJ Maxx haul. But it'll be in and out, and I'm not bringing my camera, my phone with me, so you won't see anything on the shelves. Um, but that is really critical when you consider you want cleaner, greener toothpaste. So look at the ingredients in your toothpaste. You can make your own. I actually share some recipes as well um, on other YouTube videos. So I have a whole oral uh, playlist that you can check out, but definitely consider looking at your toothpaste um, and, you know, some basic toothpaste that can be beneficial, you know, coconut oil, baking soda, you know, silica, there's ingredients that you can easily buy over the counter in bulk, make on your own. You can add clove oil, which is fantastic. Clove oil is so good. I love it. I add it to my coffee. I put a little dash of clove in my coffee grounds and I get clove. And that's another good way to support your oral cavity. Now, another thing that's fantastic is oil pulling. This is an Ayurvedic practice. It is a way of um, clearing out bacteria. It's a way of cleaning your teeth. It's a way of emulsifying and getting rid of tartar and plaque. And it involves taking two tablespoons of coconut oil. Most of the time it's sesame oil, like that's the actual Ayurvedic oil, but most of us don't have access to get it. It's really expensive, but coconut oil you can get. So over the counter, coconut oil, a lot of times you're gonna get it and it's in a solid form. So it might kind of feel weird when you put that solid mass on your tongue, but just let it dissolve and then start swishing. And you swish for 20, Sometimes, you know, 15, 20, up to 25 minutes, 30 minutes, however you can swish. It will cause your, this is the other good thing. It will reduce wrinkles. If you do oil pulling, you are going to, because you're, you are going to strengthen your muscle tone of the lips and of your cheeks. And this is a wonderful thing for us ladies. It's also great for any of my patients that have, they were smokers and it was quit smoking. And you know, a lot of smokers have wrinkles around the lips. Oil pulling will, it will, will help rejuvenate the collagen. So by swishing, you're, you're using your muscles of your face and your cheeks uh, back here in the lower jaw. Very fantastic. And so I really recommend oil pulling at least once a week. Now, if you have had dental work, and I've been very clear with all of you, and wedding prep, I actually had a tooth removed. I did the PRP. I have a whole video on that. I did bone grafting and it was very intense. And I used oil pulling to actually help heal and speed up my healing process. And I had a tight window because I wanted to have all that done before the wedding that we had to postpone because of COVID. Um, but it was really, really a big part of my healing process, all of my tactics. And I've been very upfront with all of you. PRP is awesome and is going to revolutionize how we heal our gums and 
heal our, 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 our dental health. But when we're looking at oil pulling coconut oil or sesame oil, 15, 20 minutes, the key here is when you are done oil pulling, you want to have a bag. So I just get like a little plastic bag, Ziploc baggie, and I spit that into the bag. What you will notice is depending on how intense your oral health is, um, and if you need a lot of healing, your the oil might be a gray or darker brown. For a lot of my folks that are detoxing from smoking or e-cigarettes or tobacco, um, you know, chew stuff, they will have really dark oil. And that's extracting, it's a detox process. It's extracting junk and gunk, and you're expelling that. Big, big benefit. I love it. So once a week at minimum, I know two or three times a week if you're really trying to combat an infection, an abscess, anything like that. And you can heal abscesses. So it is, becomes really critical. Um, yes. And Pau says, Guru Nanda has a coconut oil pulling. I actually, I have a, a coupon for Guru Nanda. I need to write that down. I love Guru Nanda. Okay. So the fourth and final thing, two things, the fourth and, and, and final is to add a oral probiotic. And there's a big difference. We have gut bacteria, which we need to enhance, but then we have nasal bacteria. If you've ever, ever had that nasal swab and they're like, oh, you have MRSA in your sinuses, or you have a candida, a yeast infection, candida overgrowth, you know, you've been swabbed and you have a different microbiota up here. Same with the oral cavity. So to improve that, we actually do an oral probiotic. And let me take this out. Basically, we add in two types of bacteria and strep, it's called Streptococcus salivarius and it's K12 and M18. These are two types of healthy oral bacteria that are often low or on the low level side if you have dental caries, sinus infections, and you might be using sulfate uh, enhanced toothpaste. So to really improve your dental health, your gum health, and to bolster the immune system of your oral cavity, and this also translates into the ear and the nose, you want to suck on this. This literally, I stick it in your mouth and you suck on it. It's got a mint flavor. I'll just suck on it. I just kind of swirl it around my mouth and, you know, sucking on it. It's like 15 minutes. It's like just a little dinner mint but it's got this kind of minty flavor. I have a link to this down below, um, but it's something for you to consider doing. This would be something I, I would recommend every day. Um, I give this to Gabriel. Gabriel had his first oral checkup with the dentist. Perfect, perfect health. I have some uh, other kids I know in our lives that have had dental caries already. And when I was young, I was one of those kids. I wish I would have had this accessible to chew on or to suck on. So the way you want to kind of do this, you brush your, you know, you do your flossing, brush your teeth. I um, mean, by the way, if you're not using an oral flosser or oral toothbrush, that's a vibration, like a sonic brush, those are really the best type of brushes. And there's a lot of quib and a whole bunch of other ones that are great. Um, but that category is one of the best brushes. So you get more bang for your buck and you actually are getting rid of a lot of the in between your teeth, um, uh, uh, plaque and buildup. So you floss, brush your teeth. Then you want to do the gargle, saline salt, salt, yeah, saline, saline salt swish. And you know, do that three or four times at the end, your last swish, you want to gargle. You can add a little colloidal into the little, you know, coffee mug and gargle that. Then, um, the next thing that you want to do is especially at night an arrow mirror, you just swish this around and then you give yourself your little oral tab. Um, and it's, it, you know, by the time you're getting ready, you, you know, do that, wash your face, you know, and get, get yourself ready for bed. This will be dissolved. And that is a very good activity to do every evening. And you, I promise, put money on it. You will notice big differences. Now, another thing that just is, is an oral enhancer, but also just globally, I love the Myco Shield. I'll post a link for this. I think I forgot to post this link, but this is um, a immune support peppermint spray. And it's got a whole bunch of mushrooms and literally sprays like that. It's got, whew, it's minty, <laughs> pretty intense mint, but it is, it's great. And I have this in my purse when I'm out and about if, you know, rarely I'm out and about, but now if I have had to run into a store, I will spray this. And even if I do, like we had to do a Walgreens pickup, I needed some items for this. 
and I, I do a little spray after any type of exposure. So that is another way to improve the immune state of your, your mouth. Now let's talk about your sinuses because your sinus health is very much hinged on your oral health. If your oral health is in bad shape, and I don't, I say this lovingly, um, you know, no judgment. If you have, you know, inflamed gums, if you've got a lot of uh, gunk on your, your tongue. Oh, by the way, the other thing I, I forgot to include, forgot to bring it down, a tongue scraper. It is a very good idea after you brush your teeth, before you do your swishing, scrape your tongue. You will be Oh, floored by how much gunk comes off your tongue, especially when you start doing it. The more you do it, the, the better your oral health gets. Our tongue is a major source of bacteria. And, you know, depending on your gag reflex, you can go really way back, you stick your tongue out and go way back and just scrape, do two or three scrapes, you know, you have your water going and scrape. And then obviously you want to put a little, you know, I have a little hydrogen spray, a hydrogen spray, before, you know, before I use it, I just spray it and then put it on water and then I, I clear it again. So that's the other thing too. You want to make sure you're taking good care of your toothpaste, your toothbrushes, you know, have spray or put a little hydrogen peroxide. Some people will put their, uh, their toothbrush in hydrogen peroxide and a little mix of water solution. That's actually the best because a lot of people don't even realize the amount of bacteria that's sitting on your toothbrush that might be open, not covered. If it's covered, it might get a little bit more bacteria. So you want to you want to really take good care overall. But when it comes to your sinuses, if you're not addressing the oral first, it doesn't really matter what you do up here, but I'm going to additionally enhance what you're doing with your sinuses. So first and foremost, saline sprays are critical. This keeps your sinuses enhanced. It keeps them lubricated. The salt is very healing. Salt's anti-inflammatory. Salt will get rid of any of the mucus. And this is what I'm using all day to help get rid of some of the inflammation I'm having because we had drywall that was cut into. There was woodworking, like literally we had our walls opened up. Some are still open. We've got the plastic thing going on. So there's a lot of particulates. This is a very effective when your particulates are allergens outside or animal dander or whatever it might be, mold as well. So saline sprays like this are very beneficial. The other thing that I really love, I brought you guys my little cute neti pot, this is one of them, but neti potting. <clears throat> and I have a whole bunch of videos on neti potting, um, but this is a neti pot. It's literally a teapot for your nose. <laughs> and this, you have little saline packs. This happens, this guy is called the, the med, neti med, but then there's the Hemelian Institute. They have really good neti pots. They're crisp, um, they're ceramic. In my family right now, I can't do anything ceramic because it would break. But you know, they've got little plastic ones, and literally, it's a little teapot for your nose. You stick this. You, you put water in to a fill line. You add your salt, and I do want to recommend that you use filtered water, like from a Berkey. And then you'd want to gently warm it up, not overly hot, but just enough to be comfortable. You want it to be somewhat warm, not, not too hot. Um, and why you want to use filtered water is that a lot of the chlorine and there's contaminants that are in the water sources that are going to cause additional irritation. So make sure some people will use distilled water, not a bad thing, but your saline, you add your, your water, you get your salt packet. Um, and then you go to town, you literally, you'll, you'll drain one sinus. So when it goes in the left, it goes all the way up and it'll come out, you know, goes around and out. And what that does is it clears out mucosal debris. It's a way of getting rid of that mucus that feels like it's stuck, you know, in the back of your throat. Um, having been doing this for now over 20 years, Sometimes when you're really clogged up, at, you know, in the morning and you're like, whoa, you can see the, the colored mucus exiting. Even after you've like gotten up, you've blown your nose, you're like, oh my God, I'm so stuffed up. This is such a great way to alleviate sinusitis, chronic inflammation of the sinuses. It's also a way to heal polyps. It's really great for anybody who's had any type of rhinoplasty or any type of nose surgery. You know, there's always going to be a degree of inflammation and scarring, deviated septums, all of that can really benefit, especially when you get these sinus headaches. And you guys know what that's like. It is so painful and it can feel like just, you just want to open, you just want to poke a hole and let the pressure out. So the pressure can cause eye irritation and irritation in your eyes. Then the pressure, we get that pressure in the eustachian tube. So clearing 
sometimes that popping noise, just a neti pot several times a day, morning and evenings, what I recommend. So, you know, one of the good things is you could do this before an oil pulling and you could have your sinuses clear or before you, you know, are doing your oil pulling. So just a recommendation. Neti pots are fantastic. I have a link down below to this if you want to check that out. Amazon's a great source for these. So you, know, you don't have to go anywhere. Um, the other thing that I do want to recommend is um, Himalayan Institute is one of like, all they do is our neti stuff. And well, they do some other stuff now, but originally like they had neti pots, neti salt, and then they'd have these like neti kits. And then they started to do, I don't have it with me, but um, I, I sold this all the time. They have this thing called neti wash and it is a blend of herbs that you can literally put in your little pot. And yellow dock is one of the herbs I love that is very healing. So it has a way to alleviate some of that major inflammation. So if you suffer from allergies, which a lot of us do, and I experienced allergies, not like in Florida, you know, when I went to Florida State, it's like the pollen capital of the world. Um, but here, it's really bad for us. And um, this the Himalayan salt, uh, the Himalayan Institute neti wash, I have a link down below. That thing is a game changer. And I used to have people that would come in and say, I had sinus infections for six months. And every year I get bronchitis because it ends up going to my chest. And especially now we need to heal these sinus passageways. We need to address your allergies and get rid of any inflammation so that if you did get exposed to COVID or any type of viral infection, that your passageways are clearer and healthier. So it just puts you in a better state. Also, it's going to help you sleep better. You're going to be, you're going to be inhaling oxygen. You're going to clear out a lot of the inflammation. And these are going to be good therapeutics too in the event that you do get uh, any type of COVID, have COVID exposure, you're in quarantine or in isolation because of exposure at a school. This is good for folks that are frontline workers to be deploying and implementing every day as a defense to healing and creating a better immune function of your sinuses. So that is, I recommend that neti wash. Um, it is so good. You can also put drops of colloidal silver and, and the Himalayan Institute also has colloidal silver, but it doesn't really matter what brand. Um, but those are really good ways to heal. And what with the colloidal silver and some of the um, herbals, it really just soothes those passageways. The other thing too, is a lot of times people like, I get some of my most frequently asked questions or how do I get rid of the puffy bags under my eyes? And so people usually expect, I'm going to say some facial cream. It's not a facial cream. It's clearing your sinuses. So a lot of times at night, if you don't do a neti pot before you go to bed, you've got all these allergens that then settle in and cause intense inflammation and inflammation. The way the body deals with it is it's an accumulation of fluid. And so the inflammation will cut down, you know, the passageway uh, functionality. Some, some people might snore because of the inflammation. Some people have sleep apnea. Some people, you know, are mouth breathers. Mouth breathers don't get enough of a solid rest. And so for like yesterday, I was talking about three things to avoid not sleeping well is one of them. Well, sometimes your inflammation in your uh, sinus cavity could be giving you poor sleep. And so by addressing this and correcting it, it can be very beneficial. Angela says, how often can we use colloidal? Can we use silver per week? Daily, you can use it daily. Um, you know, there, there was one gentleman who made his own colloidal silver. I don't advise that. These, these companies are, are, are processing it the way they need to, you know, 250, it can go up to 500. I've even seen 750 parts per million. You know, a, a, a little droplet of it is not going to give you any harm. Um, but it's when people are drinking gallons of it, bad idea. <laughs> I don't recommend And it's expensive. So, um, you know, there's a lot of grief for, you know, the silver guy, but it, that doesn't happen if you follow, you know, the directions. Um, Georgina says, OMG, I get sinus infections every year. I tried that wash. I don't enjoy neti pot, but need to get used to it. Yeah. So sometimes when you're so inflamed, and I've had this experience, sometimes water doesn't come out. Like it is so inflamed that it's like cinched. There's no capacity. So sometimes if you don't like it, it feels like you're drowning. 
I know the other thing too is the technique. So you want to kind of, you, you know, your sinks here, you want to kind of tilt your head and down. And so when you're doing this, the tilt and down, it gets the bigger access here and then comes out. Um, so just be patient with it. And mentally, like the other thing too, is if we align our brain and our mental thought on it, you just, just think about releasing and relaxing. And those passageways will respond. You actually relax the, the muscles of your, your face and you know, the upper nose, the forehead, and you might get a little bit more effect, but I promise you it little discomfort will go a long way. The thing I want to share with you, and I don't think I did this. Um, just overall, as far, especially with oral microbiota, um, the other thing too, and I'm a big gum chewer. I like to, you know, kind of suck on like uh, little mints and things like that. One of the really beneficial things you can do is by choosing healthy gum and xylitol, like xylitol, different types of xylitol can be very beneficial. Um, you guys are buffering now sound. Ah, lovely. Okay. So, um, but xylitol gum can be really, really wonderful for also improving the oral microbiota. It can get rid of some of the bacteria that's causing bad breath. And it's also very good for just balancing uh, your oral health. So definitely do consider uh, chomping on and chewing a, a gum um, in that category. So I hope this was helpful. Um, YouTube, let me know if you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Hit the share button. I also want to thank futuristic. He provided, uh, futuristic is in Australia. He gave us a $10 super chat. I am grateful. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And, um, you know, for folks that are watching this video and you experience sinus difficulty and, um, you know, different kind of like tonsil inflammation, or even even heartburn, you know, that's affecting your oral microbiota. I promise you, you do this routinely, get in the habit of doing these activities every day, and most importantly, switch out your toothpaste, you will notice big changes in terms of that, those inflammatory levels. So it looks like we lost sound. I'm all good on my end. So I don't know what's going on with YouTube. Um, but I just want to thank each and every one of you for uh, tuning in and for participating and being such great uh, viewers. I'm grateful for this opportunity to give you some tips to help you heal and to get you feeling fabulous. So uh, definitely tune in. Tomorrow is our Q&A live Friday. Um, so I'd encourage you to join me um, tomorrow. I will post uh, a call for questions. And it's funny, some people can hear me fine and others can't. So I don't know what is going on. But at any rate, thank you again for tuning in. Please, if you love this, give me a thumbs up and um, share this content. And most importantly, go back when this, especially on YouTube, go back and comment um, on the channel. And I saw a lot of questions. I wasn't, I'm so sorry, I was so zoned in. So if you have additional questions specific to your nose and throat, comment on the comment box. I'll make sure that I... Um, uh, review those. I am, uh, man, I tell you what, this kindergarten, the junior K thing for us, it is really intense. And so I'm like, I'm by Gabriel's side pretty much up until three o'clock. Um, so I want to thank each and every one of you and uh, have a fabulous day. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Thank you. See you guys later.